the right brain is certainly responsible for creativity, but so is the left. So I think this notion that the right brain is somehow privileged with respect to creativity is a myth. It actually goes back to the 19th century when they first discovered that the left brain was uh, responsible for language. Uh, the right brain does have some language, it turns out, but the left brain is the um, driver, if you like, of speech and of understanding speech and even of sign language. So, so language is in the left brain. And that led people to wonder what on earth the right brain is doing. Uh, and it was sort of discovered that the right brain has some dominance in um, music, perhaps, in, uh, certainly in spatial understanding. And that sort of got extrapolated wildly so that people thought that the, the, the left brain was sort of analytical and rather boring and the right brain was uh, kind of the creative, artistic, emotional side. But we know, of course, that the two sides of the brain are very much the same. I mean, you've only got to look at them to see that they have the same structure. So the differences are, are, are much less than the similarities. And I think if you're going to be creative, you need both sides of the brain. Now, we now know from brain imaging that uh, if people are asked to do creative tasks, even people uh, asked to do artistic kinds of tasks. And one experiment I know was actually done with art students. And they put them in the scanner and they got them to do creative things or think creative thoughts about design. And it turned out, of course, that both sides of the brain are active. And there was no sense that the right side was more active than the left. A lot of this, by the way, I should say, also came out of the 1960s with the uh, famous split brain work. So there was a famous operation that was done in the 60s to control epilepsy. And that involved basically cutting the brain in half. So the corpus callosum, the connection between the two sides of the brain was cut. And the idea was that that would prevent the epileptic seizures from, uh, from moving from one side of the brain and occupying the whole brain. And it was a very successful operation. But it also gave the opportunity to look at what each side of the brain does, unencumbered by the other side. And it was then sort of uh, rediscovered that the left brain does language and the right brain is a little bit better at some um, spatial kinds of skills. And that again got wildly sort of extrapolated to the belief that the two sides of the brain are complementary and opposite. We love dichotomies for some reason as humans. So we constantly try to dichotomize the mind and dichotomize the world into good and evil and night and day, and left and right, and, and, the, and male and female. So uh, I think it's a, a, a predisposition to dichotomize things that led to the idea that the two sides of the brain are opposites. They're complementary. They bring out opposite sides of our nature. And it simply isn't true. It also actually, during the 60s, I think it was actually partly driven by political forces at the time. So the, uh, the left side of the brain was sort of the military industrial establishment, you know, kind of all dominant and overpowering. And the right side of the brain was the east, you know, Vietnam. And the sort of one, what they thought of then as the creative, uh, creative world of, of Eastern civilizations. So these dichotomies sort of got plonked into the left and right sides of the brain, with the right side presumed to be the peaceful but creative side. And I think that's persisted. Uh, it's amazing to me that it's persisted for so long. But I think the message now is we should uh, use all of our brains and not just half of it. <laughs>